Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. Take a really deep breath in and as you exhale, let go of any stress or any worries or anything else that's been on your mind lately so you can have a good relaxing cleanse before getting into your zodiac prediction. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the zodiac sign prediction for the month of November of 2022. We're gonna be going through your astrology. I personally do Western astrology and I highly recommend checking out your sun, your moon, and your rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. If you do not know what those signs are, there are some online calculators that you can use to figure them out. In order to find out your rising sign, you are gonna need to know your exact time of birth and your exact place of birth to get the most accurate rising sign for you since the rising sign is basically the constellation that was coming up on the horizon when you were born and that changes pretty often. So you will need to know your exact time and your exact city and place of birth. So if you do know what those are, then you can figure out what your rising sign is, which I find is one of the most accurate signs when we're doing a monthly astrology. But with that being said, I'm really excited to get into this video with you and I hope you are too. And without further ado, let's hop right into today's video. Okay, so my Aries, welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction. So we begin the month of November on November 8th with a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is in your second house. Whenever we have a full moon lunar eclipse affecting your second house, this is going to bring up things around what do you value. So my Aries, what is it that you value? You'll notice that your old values are possibly changing around this time because full moons bring the endings of certain cycles or chapters. So there was a chapter in your life where maybe you've outgrown older values and you're noticing that you value something kind of maybe completely different. You're starting to really see the value in what you have, what you own, your money, or having a, a higher sense of security in your life and feeling like more comfortable. I think a lot of my areas, you're gonna start to really value your comfort a lot more around this time. So the full moon lunar eclipse is highlighting that for my Aries. Then on the 15th of the month, we have Venus moving into Sagittarius, which is going to be in your ninth house. Whenever Venus transits the ninth, this can be an expansion of what we find beautiful. You may notice that you're really kind of feeling a little bit more artsy or you want to bring out more passion in your life. Maybe you're wanting to expand your money or finances in a certain way, or even expand your level of comfort or beauty that you're surrounded by. So Venus transit this area can really bring that, especially since it is in the sign of Sagittarius and we're really just feeling a lot more love. This can also be a time where you're really wanting to spread more love, share more love with the people that you're around, be more expressive about it and being more um, curious about other people that maybe we haven't talked to in a long time, especially because on the 17th, which is just a couple days later, we also have Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is also of course going to be in your ninth house. And this is when we are probably wanting to reach out and expand our communication to other people. You may be thinking about people that you haven't talked to in a while or people that live far away that maybe we don't um, talk to very often and this can be a time where we're curious about them or we're thinking about people a lot more and maybe we're wanting to communicate more maybe we're wanting to reach out and see how certain people are doing this can really um, enhance your curiosity about other people and wanting to maybe see how they are doing and wanting to kind of be more inclusive in that way then on the 20th of the month we have sun trying jupiter which is one of my favorite transits of all time and it's affecting all of the zodiac signs in a very positive way. Even though Jupiter is retrograde in Pisces while it is trining the sun in Scorpio, this is still a very positive and beautiful time. And it really just enhances a lot of energy. It enhances a lot of good fortune for a lot of people. So basically for the entire collective, this is a time of like, a lot of really good energy in the air. For you particularly, it's affecting your eighth and 12th house. So for my Aries, this is really starting to affect you in um, your mentality, your emotional states. You'll notice that you feel more expansive and you're probably gonna feel a lot more happy or have certain breakthroughs around this time where we're breaking through maybe certain barriers that were once blocking us or we're noticing that we have a lot more 
happening that's making us feel positive and making us feel good. This can also be a time of a lot of healing and expanding out of kind of our older limitations and things like that. So this is gonna be a very positive time for my Aries. Then on the 21st, we have Mercury conjunct Venus in the sign of Sagittarius, which is in your ninth house. When these two conjunct, it is just enhancing that feeling of goodness that we are feeling even in the beginning and middle of the month. So this is a time where it's going to really be about communicating your feelings and expanding your realm of communication. You might notice that this time you're feeling a lot more creative and and expressive in the ways that you desire to express yourself. You may also notice that you become a lot more curious around this time and maybe you're just noticing that you're thinking about things that you don't normally think about. This is really expanding your mind, your mentality, and also your communication and just kind of wanting to enhance things around your life. Then on the 23rd, we have our new moon in Sagittarius, which is in your ninth house as well. The new moon brings about a new cycle. So this is gonna be a new cycle of expansion for my Aries. And it makes sense because a lot of your you know, values are gonna be changing. There's a lot going on in the sign of Sagittarius during this month, which is all ninth house for you. And this is definitely expanding your mind. You may notice that you're really curious about learning new things because the ninth house can also be where we're really curious about learning or even spreading wisdom in some kind of way. So I honestly think a lot of my areas are gonna be very curious around this time and just expansive in a lot of ways. This is a real good time for expansion and thinking about ways that you want to expand yourself. And also on that same day, we have Jupiter going direct in the sign of Pisces, which is in your 12th house. So when Jupiter went retrograde in your 12th house, this could have highlighted a lot of certain kind of limitations that we've had in our mind. And these limitations are now kind of being broken through and you're realizing how you can actually begin to expand out of those old limitations. The 12th house is your mentality, your mind, your subconscious. And you may be noticing a lot of subconscious patterns are coming around this time. And this is also kind of what's triggering this huge change in values for a lot of my Aries and realizing what do I really value? And you may be maturing a lot around this time and realizing that there's a new you that is developing and has been developing over the past one while. And as Jupiter now goes direct over here, now is a time to finally begin expanding your mind even more and kind of, you know, really starting to grow. And I really see you as like a blossoming tree or like a blossoming flower at this time, especially with Jupiter going direct in your 12th house. This is really a time where things are now being watered. Things are now expanding and able to expand. Whereas before it was kind of like reflecting on maybe what our old restrictions and constraints were or our old um, behaviors or old values and things like that. You're now expanding out of that and really kind of blossoming and becoming something more and something bigger. Then on the 30th of the month, we're gonna have Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. This is going to be affecting your ninth and third house. So this is a time where it's either gonna bring out a lot of passion, but sometimes this aspect can also bring out a little bit of friction as well. Sometimes when we become so passionate about something, we can also become sort of overly emotional about things at times. Although with this aspect, it can also just bring out a lot of creativity and a lot of energy. So around the end of November, my Aries, you may be noticing that you have like an extra amount of energy and depending on how you utilize that, especially if you utilize it mentally with being curious and expressing yourself in loving ways and in expansive ways, you're gonna notice that this energy really works for you and really boosts your creativity. Although if you allow this energy to really start to accumulate without really communicating it in productive ways or without really utilizing what it's kind of calling you and pushing you towards, you may notice that there's a bit more friction coming up around the end of November, but you can really use this energy for you depending on how you go about utilizing it. So if you utilize it in the way where it's really productive and loving and expansive and curious, you're going to notice that you get a lot of creativity and a lot of passion out of it. So that is what we have for my Aries for the month of November of 2022. That was for my Aries suns, moons, and risings. Definitely be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you. For the month of November, I'm sending you all of my love. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.
All right, so my Tauruses, suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction for the month of November. So on the 8th of November, we actually have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is of course in your sign in your first house. This is going to be affecting all of my Tauruses quite majorly because it is a lunar eclipse and eclipses kind of intensify the whole full moon that we're having. Full moons are endings of cycles and endings of phases. And since this is in your sign, there is a major cycle of your life that you are closing out, that you are now ending. You're noticing that maybe certain aspects of yourself just no longer really are there. They're no longer kind of, you know, playing a part in your life. And now you're noticing that there's a whole new chapter that you're possibly wanting to open. And this comes through closing out certain aspects of yourself. So there could be certain characteristics that you just no longer resonate with. There could be old hobbies, old ways of being, your old lifestyle that maybe is not really there anymore because there's been a lot of changes happening for you, especially since we also have Uranus that's been transiting Taurus as well. There's been tons of changes for my Tauruses and this full moon lunar eclipse is now going to be closing out old cycles for my Tauruses completely on the 8th of the month. Then on the 15th and the 17th, we're going to be having Venus and also Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is going to be in your eighth house. And when these two um, planets move into Sagittarius, this can bring out a really fun kind of flirtatious sort of energy um, in the month of November. So you're going to notice in mid-November, you're more inclined to have fun or be social or be flirtatious. But the fact that this is in your eighth house, there could be certain aspects where you're wanting to maybe switch up how you are being flirtatious and how you are communicating those sorts of feelings and that fun sort of nature, you're going to notice that you have a whole shift or a metamorphosis in this area. You may desire to express yourself sort of differently than maybe you have before, or maybe you're bringing up feelings that haven't been expressed before around this time, because the eighth house can also be when we're digging up um, certain things that maybe weren't really on the surface before, and now they're getting deeper, we're going deeper within ourselves, or you may even be noticing that instead of being so surface level with the way that you express yourself, you're wanting to go deeper. You're wanting to talk about the deeper stuff lately rather than surface level blah. Like that stuff is probably not going to bring you a lot of interest um, during mid-November, whereas maybe, you know, fun flirty energy used to be fun, but you're gonna notice in mid-November you're kind of wanting things to be a little bit deeper. Maybe you're seeking for something a little bit deeper around this time as well. So if somebody's being uh, fun and flirtatious with you, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, but like, what's the deeper aspect of this? Like, I wanna go deeper with this. And maybe you're wanting to even go deeper within yourself as well. So my Tauruses, that is going to be that energy during the mid of November. Then on the 20th, we're gonna be having one of my favorite transits of all time, which is Sun trying Jupiter. Jupiter is retrograde in the sign of Pisces and the sun is in the sign of uh, Scorpio. These two, when they try on each other, they are such a positive aspect even when Jupiter is in retrograde. So for all of my zodiac signs, this is gonna be affecting everyone very positively. This is an expansion in fortune. This is an expansion in your mind, your mentality, your creativity, and all of that. And this is affecting my Taurus's seventh and 11th house. So this is gonna be affecting your relationships, which is really interesting especially because it looks like in the middle of the month you've been wanting to get a lot deeper and then of course we have this transit coming out Sun trying Jupiter you're gonna be really wanting to expand your feelings and your relationships you're really wanting to get deeper and you're really wanting to connect to the ones that truly bring you a, a feeling of deeper abundance or a feeling of expansion like people that you're on the same wavelength with so this is bringing a beautiful highlight of good fortune to your relationships in the or on the 20th of november and this transit kind of lasts for a few days prior to the 20th and as well as a few days after the 20th this transit kind of highlights for about like over a week i would say is going to bring a lot of like really good energy and really good fortune to your friendships and your other sort of deeper partnerships in your life then on the 21st, we're gonna be having Mercury and Venus conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius, which is of course in your eighth house. This is sort of bringing about that same energy that we had in mid-November, where it's really like, 
wanting to get deeper. And at this point, you're going to possibly have a sort of moment where you do get sort of deeper with someone or you kind of connect on a deeper level or you're able to connect deeper at least within yourself and sort of realize what it is that you really want and i really think a lot of my tauruses you are going to be transforming your ways of communicating you're going to be transforming your ways of expressing yourself and it's going to be a huge benefit to you because you're looking at how to go deeper you're looking at how to unlock parts of yourself to be more vulnerable and that's going to be a huge highlight during the month of november for my tauruses then on the 23rd, we're gonna be having the new moon in Sagittarius, which is of course also in your eighth house. So there's tons of Sagittarius energy. Um, and this new moon is bringing out this new cycle. And it's interesting that this is all happening after we had the Mercury Venus conjunction. And then right after that, we have this new moon in Sagittarius, which is opening up a brand new cycle for you. You are really transforming to get a lot deeper and to also express deeper aspects of yourself. My Tauruses, you really like to be comfortable, but I really think you're going to be stepping into a new chapter of comfort where you're more comfortable being more vulnerable. You're more comfortable being more open about your deeper aspects, your deeper desires, your deeper feelings that maybe we try to hide or conceal sometimes. This is a time of getting a lot deeper. Then on that same day, we also have Jupiter direct in the sign of Pisces. So it's coming out of its retrograde and that's happening on the 11th or that's happening in your 11th house, not on the 11th. Um, it's happening on the 23rd, the same day as the new moon in Sagittarius, but this is affecting your 11th house. And as Jupiter goes direct over here, now it's finally time to begin expanding your friend group. This can be where we get closer with certain people. This could be even when you begin meeting new people. This could be when, you know, we've maybe revised and thought about who we really want to have in our life that's really close to us. And this is a time where now that's actually going to begin moving forward. It feels right. We feel like we've done those revisions and now we're moving forward on them. Then on the 30th of the month, we're going to be having Venus and Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini, which is going to be affecting your eighth and second house. So this is definitely some bigger transformations within. And then since uh, Mars is going to be in your second house, this may be a time where it can bring out more fun and passion and creativity, but also this aspect can bring some friction depending on how we use it. So if you use this to begin expressing yourself in a positive and healthy way, this is going to be something that really benefits you. But this aspect, since it can also create friction, especially if we're not utilizing this energy correctly, it can create kind of maybe also some disharmony as well, depending on how we use it. So if you're not expressing your deeper feelings in a productive and healthy and beautiful way, you may notice that there's a little bit of friction that might be caused around this in your physical life. Um, but if you kind of, you know, look at how to be more soft, more healthy, um, really open with communication and also listening, because this aspect, since we have Gemini and Sagittarius, this is going to heavily deal with also listening, paying attention to other people and really wanting to understand them as well, then this is going to be a beautiful time for you. So that is going to be your key in order to make this Venus oppose Mars transit, be very positive and passionate and loving rather than being full of friction. The key is going to be listening and really being there and focusing on how to create the outcome that you actually desire through understanding and listening and communicating in healthy ways. So that is what we have for my Tauruses for the month of November for 2022. I hope you enjoyed this reading and don't forget to check out your other sun, moon, and rising signs to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. So my Gemini's suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your November horoscope. On the 8th of November, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. Lunar eclipses are like much more intense full moons. And this is happening in the sign of Taurus, which is in your 12th house. This is closing out a whole mental cycle for Gemini. So if you've been overthinking lately, or if you've been noticing that your mind has been maybe, you know, kind of more going in depths where it's like, whoa, that's uh, that's a lot of stuff. 
This is now closing out an old cycle mentally for my Geminis. You're about to go into a brand new cycle mentally where you're closing out all the stuff that has no longer been serving you, all the stuff that's maybe been holding you back or the things that have been sort of kind of like recycled in your mind that are ready to be kind of thrown out. Um, this is a time for that. So you're going to be noticing that your mind becomes a lot more of a comfortable place. Taurus is about comfort. And since we have this full moon lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Taurus, this is now bringing about a lot more comfort for my Gemini's mentally. Then on the 15th and the 17th of the month, we're going to be having Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is in your seventh house. Venus and Mercury in the sign of Sagittarius in general are like very fun and flirtatious and when we get really expansive we want to just really express ourselves but in a really fun and kind of light-hearted kind of way and being in your seventh house this deals with your intimate relationships so you may be noticing that there's a lot more fun or some fun banter or just kind of exciting sort of flirtatious fiery kind of fun energy happening around mid-November for my Geminis. And Geminis, I feel like you're really stimulated by those things anyway, but this is going to be something that's really expansive and stimulating for you. You may even be really forward focused as well since Sagittarius does deal with how are we going to expand in the future. So when it comes to your intimate relationships, you may be having fun kind of cute conversations or just fun conversations in general about where you're going to see yourself in the future or what you desire to be in the future, where you desire to be, the goals that you really want to get to, especially when it comes to other people in your life as well. Like you may be having fun kind of conversations around that. Then on the 20th, we're going to have one of my favorite transits of all time, if not kind of my favorite transit, and it affects all the signs in such a beautiful way. And that is Sun trying Jupiter. The Sun is in the sign of Scorpio, Jupiter's in the sign of Pisces. And while it is retrograde, it's still a very positive aspect. And this is affecting your sixth and 10th house. So the transformations that my Geminis have been making when it comes to, you know, your schedule, your routine, your health, your body, your fitness, anything like that, these transformations are going to be something that you start to notice even more. You're going to really start to see progress in these areas, especially if you've been making those changes. And since it's trying Jupiter in the 10th house, this is now really starting to push you to the goals that you've been really seeking to attain. There's been revisions that you may have had to make when it came to um, your your schedule and your routine, your work, your fitness, your health, your goals. There may have been, ha been revisions that you had to make around this area, but with this beautiful trine between Jupiter and the sun, this is now going to really highlight the progress and the transformations that it has been creating. The effort that you put in to these areas is now beginning to pay off, whether that be in a small way or a big way, but Jupiter promises that there's gonna be even more expansion in the future. And this is gonna be where you're starting to see how your efforts have been really starting to pay off. And I think it's gonna really start to open up new ideas for you about how you can expand even more when it comes to your goals, your career, your money, your schedule and your routine, your health and your fitness. All of these areas you're starting to see how you can really expand them even more and this is going to be a very positive transit that gives you more ideas and more inspiration then on the 21st we're going to have venus and um, mercury conjunct in the sign of sagittarius which is in your seventh house so this is kind of highlighting that same energy that we had in the middle of the month when both of these signs or both of these planets moved into the sign of sagittarius now we have them conjunct and this is going to be highlighting all that energy even more on the 21st so you may be noticing that things start really happening, things start really moving forward when it comes to your visions for the future and when it comes to the conversations that you're having around those visions. You may even be noticing that you're getting a lot of like feelings around this time or a lot of ideas and pictures in your mind about what you visualize your future to be like, especially when it comes to the other people that are in your life and maybe the goals that you have with them. This is a time of kind of expanding into that, having more fun, flirty, kind of maybe joking conversations about certain things that might actually have like a depth of truth to them. Um, this can also be where you're just feeling a lot more expressive. You may just want to express yourself more when it comes to the people that are in your life and the people that you're really close to. 
Then on the 23rd, we're gonna be having our new moon in Sagittarius, which is also again in your seventh house. We have a lot of Sagittarius energy, which is affecting a lot of my Gemini's interpersonal relationships, the close connections that you have, as well as the balance in your life. You're gonna feel like your life is a lot more balanced around this time, and this new moon is opening up a new cycle and a new wave of new habits and patterns that are going to keep you more in balance. So my Gemini's, you're really starting to implement things around this time of the month where you just are more balanced in general. Things seem to be flowing forward a lot better and it's because of all the revisions that you've had to learn and make over the past few months. This is something that's really starting to now be implemented and you're noticing that things are moving forward a lot better and in a much better way. On that same day, we also have Jupiter going direct in Pisces in your 10th house. And this is now when things are gonna really move forward in the ways that you wanna expand in your goals. So that new moon that's happening, that's like a new cycle in your relationships, it's a whole new cycle in um, your vision for the future. And it's also, you know, that same day that Jupiter goes direct. And so now it's a huge time to expand and Jupiter is, um, the ruling planet of Sagittarius. So both of these happening on the same day is actually really significant. So the 23rd is a really significant time for everybody. And it, again, it's a significant, significant time because it's affecting Gemini's in the seventh and 10th house. So certain partnerships and especially partnerships when it comes to goals or business or career or anything, partnerships, Goals with partnerships are going to be huge for Gemini's during the end of November. And you're realizing that you're making all the right connections. You're connecting to the right people when it comes to certain goals that you have. If you have a vision, this is now when all those right people are going to show up in your life and you're discussing fun topics about how things are going to look in the future, how things are going to end up being in the future. So it's going to be a very positive time for all of my Gemini's. Then on the 30th of the month, we have Venus in Sagittarius oppose um, Mars in Gemini. And again, this is your seventh and first house. So when Venus opposes Mars, this can bring out a lot of passion. It can bring out a lot of positive energy where we're taking a lot of action in our life. But if we use it in the wrong way, it can also be a transit that can cause friction, but it really depends on how we use it. So a huge thing since we have this opposition between the seventh and first house. This deals with yourself, your vision, your ego, your everything, your yourself versus other people and other people's dreams, desires, wishes, and visions as well. So since these two are in opposition, we're needing to honor both sides. We're needing to listen as well as communicate. We're needing to honor ourselves, honor our desires while also being conscious and honoring other people. Otherwise it may cause some friction if we are too one-sided. If we're all about other people and you know compromising ourselves too much, we're gonna notice some friction within ourselves where maybe we're disappointing ourselves a lot or vice versa. We could also be you know, solely focused on ourselves and it may cause a little bit of friction when it comes to the other people that are in our life. So this is about creating that nice balance. When we have that nice balance where we're really honoring ourselves but also honoring others and doing, doing that in integrity, you're gonna notice that passion and creativity excels around this time. You're gonna notice that cooperation and collaboration is so beautiful and you're on the same page and things are working out very beautifully and you're creating more passion in these areas and expanding even more on ideas and communication than ever before because this is gonna heavily deal with your communication, learning from others, being open, and then also expressive yourself. So that is what we have for my Gemini's for the month of November, my Gemini suns, moons, and risings. Be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising signs to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. I am sending you all of my love. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, so my Cancers, suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction for November. So on November 8th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is going to be in your 11th house. Uh, lunar eclipses are basically like a much more intense full moon. And being in your 11th house, this is closing out old cycles with maybe friendships, closing out old cycles with how we associate with other people in the world and things like that. Because Cancer, you are realizing that you desire 
your comfort more than you desire to people please, more than you desire to necessarily always be there for other people, especially if it's making you uncomfortable. Situations that make you very uncomfortable, you're like, why am I, what, what, what's even the point of that, right? So this full moon lunar eclipse is helping you close out old cycles where maybe we weren't honoring our comfort or our emotion or other things like that. This is now finally time to like end those cycles, end those patterns because cancer, that is, we just don't got time for that anymore. So that is going to be happening on the 8th of November. Then on the 15th and 17th, we have Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius. And when these move into the sign of Sagittarius, this is a very fun kind of time where we're noticing we're more expressive. We want to have more fun in general, but this is affecting your sixth house. And the sixth house is your schedules and your routines, your health, your fitness, things like that. Um, so what you're noticing around this time, you may notice that work life gets more fun, or maybe you're just doing things that make your career or your work or your schedule, or your routine more exciting and more fun in general. And so this could be when you're starting to just joke around a little bit more, be a little bit more playful. There's definitely a playful energy happening mid November. You may also be noticing that you're feeling a lot better and more fun and more in control of your life because of like new routines that you're implementing into your life around this time. You may even be thinking about ways that you can expand yourself to reach newer goals with your schedule. You may be thinking about, okay, how can I plan and make room for that so that I'm actually, you know, reaching, you know, certain other things that I desire to reach in the future. Cause you're really like envisioning the future and thinking about what can I do now that's going to help me get there in the future. Then on the 20th of the month, we have one of my favorite transits of all time. In fact, I think it's my favorite transit. This is Sun trine Jupiter. The Sun is in the sign of Scorpio. Jupiter is retrograde in the sign of Pisces. And even though it's retrograde, it is still such a positive transit. This is going to be affecting your fifth and ninth house. This is heavily going to be about uh, Cancer's what is fun for you? What is exciting for you? Because Jupiter is really trying to expand your ninth house. This can be when we start thinking about new ways of adding more excitement into our life. This could be thinking about ways that we can have more fun and just expand ourselves, learn more. Because especially if you've been noticing that maybe things have been getting mundane or boring, this is a time in November where you're going to be like, nope, let's make it more fun again. Jupiter trine the sun. Anytime that this transit happens, it is so positive for all of these zodiac signs. And since it's affecting your fifth and ninth house, this is going to highlight your hobbies, your ways of having fun, expanding yourself into more. You may even be noticing that maybe you get ideas or get invited to events or have conversations that open you up a bit more to new ideas that expand you into like, oh, that sounds kind of fun. And maybe I want to kind of do that or something. It's definitely going to be an expansive time that opens you up to new realms. Then on the 21st of the month, we're going to be having Mercury conjunct Venus in the sign of Sagittarius, which is in your sixth house. So we had those two both move into the sign of Sagittarius in mid November, but now they're going to be conjunct on the 21st. And this is really going to be where you notice that um, this is a time for just enjoying yourself. You may also notice that you enjoy your work a lot more, especially if you are in school or working in a job. This can be a time where things are just kind of more fun or there could be exciting things happening around this time or there's certain things that you're looking forward to. Um, and this can also be where we're getting more productive as well. You may notice that you have more energy to be productive. You may notice that you have more energy to kind of like be of service or put the work into the things that you've been meaning to get done or meaning to do, but you're finding kind of fun ways to do that. You're almost seeing the kind of more excitement um, in that and how it's going to help you in the future. And then on the 23rd of the month, we're going to have our new moon in Sagittarius, which is in your sixth house. So a lot of sixth house stuff happening for my cancers, tons of Sagittarius aspects, and this is going to be highlighting all of the aspects of, again, your career, your schedule, your routine, your health and fitness. And this new moon here is really starting a new cycle for you. All new moons are when we open up a new chapter. And since this is in the sign of Sagittarius, this can be where we're really starting to get more expansive, where we're really starting to think outside of the box. We're really wanting to become more, do more. We don't just want to stay in our same place anymore and just do the same things every single day. You're really wanting to expand. You're really wanting to 
follow the vision of what you want your future to be and that's all happening on the 23rd and it's interesting because on that same day we also have Jupiter direct in the sign of Pisces which is in your ninth house and Jupiter direct this is now when we're going to really start to expand um, ourselves and our mind and kind of just expansion in general. Jupiter is the planet of abundance and expansion and travel and it's been going retrograde uh, for the past while now and this has been in your ninth house that it's been retrograde here and this has been causing a lot of deeper thinking deeper thought coming out a lot of reflection things like that and now that it's going direct it's going to really be where you start to move forward you're really more sure of yourself around this time you're really more sure of your decisions and what you know and what you've learned so it's going to be a very positive transit for my cancers then on the 30th we're going to be having venus in Saturn Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. When these two planets are in opposition, it can bring out a lot of passion, but it can also bring out some friction and things like that that we need to work through depending on how we utilize this energy. So this is affecting your sixth and twelfth house. And when these two are in opposition, we may have certain mentalities, old mentalities that may come in conflict with you know, our schedule, our routine, our fitness. Maybe you're even kind of being overly harsh on yourself or over, overly critical on yourself at times. And if so, you're gonna notice that this transit brings out more of that friction. But if you do notice that, it's okay to be um, easy on yourself. This is a time where you can actually use this for healing. So if you do notice that you're getting a bit more you know, critical of yourself or critical of the world, critical of other things. This can be a great time for healing and we can actually use this transit to think in a more expansive way, especially since we have the Sagittarius and Gemini energy. This can be where we start to think more expansively and just think like, you know what? Everything is all good because we're all learning here. Nobody's perfect. Like, let's just enjoy it and be more lighthearted. If you're more lighthearted around this time and you're able to kind of let go of certain criticisms or certain other kind of stuff that comes up around this time, you're going to notice that it is wildly healing for you. And then it's going to bring out a lot more fun in these areas. You're going to notice that your mentality becomes a lot more fun and that is going to get reflected in how you really show up in the world, how you really show up when it comes to your schedule, your routine, your fitness, your health, your body, and everything. You're going to notice that things become an environment where you're able to grow and blossom rather than an environment where we're being really harsh, right? This is a time where we can really begin to unlock a new world that can be very beneficial for us. So that transit's happening on the 30th. And again, if you're noticing around the end of November, any friction kind of coming up, especially internally, this is a time that you can use for great healing. This is a time where we can focus on, you know what, how can I be productive in this way? How can I utilize this energy if I'm being critical about something? How can I make it great? How can I make it better? And then you're going to notice that if you use this energy to take action towards what you desire and use it as a form of encouragement rather than discouragement, if you just flip that, this is going to be a wildly good transit for you that ends up pushing you in greater directions and opens up new doors for you in a very passionate and positive, exciting, curious kind of way. And it's going to be great. So that is what we have for my cancers for the month of November, my cancer suns, moons, and risings. Again, be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. And I'm sending you all of my love and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, so my Leos, suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction for the month of November. So on the eighth of the, uh, on the eighth of November, we have our full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is in your tenth house. This can be a time where we're heavily closing out an old chapter. The lunar eclipses are like much more intense versions of the full moon, which is all about closing out old cycles. Being in the sign of Taurus for you, which is in your 10th house, this is an old cycle when it comes to possibly your career, your work, or your goals that you've even had in life, because the 10th house can talk about our goals. Maybe there's certain goals where you're like, mm, you know what, I used to want that, but now maybe that's changing. Maybe that's now shifting into something else. 
And this can also be a time where we're looking at our old spending habits around money, our old saving habits around money, our old investment habits. And maybe we're like, you know what? I think I desire to do something completely different with my money. And maybe I desire to have a different relationship with my money, with my goals to make me feel more at ease, to make me feel more comfortable, to make me feel like I'm actually reaching certain goals that I desire. So this is gonna be a huge time where a lot of my Leos are closing out old patterns and habits and cycles in those areas. Then on the 15th and the 17th of November, we have um, Venus as well as Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, and that's going to be in your fifth house. Anytime Venus as well as Mercury move into the sign of Sagittarius, it can bring out a much more fun, kind of expansive, creative, sort of energy where we're much more flirty, things are more fun, we just wanna have more fun and more expansion. And in your fifth house, it is the it is kind of like your Leo house, but it is also about having fun, dating, passion, romance, things like that. So with these two planets moving in there, this is gonna be a huge time for Leos where you're noticing that it is just time to have more fun. Leos, you're more focused on how can I enjoy myself more? How can I enjoy my life more? How can I just like, you know, be my fun sort of flirtatious self? And you're gonna notice that that really starts to come out mid-November. You may have a lot more opportunity to let that side out a lot more or you may even be noticing that people are coming to you being a lot more fun and flirtatious maybe you're attracting people into your life that seem to bring out more fun kind of moments and excitement and passion in your life you may also notice that romance starts expanding in your life around this time as well. Then on the 20th of the month, we're going to have one of my favorite transits, which is Sun trine Jupiter. And even though Jupiter is retrograde in the sign of Pisces right now, this is still such a positive transit that's bringing blessings and great energy to all of the zodiac signs. In particularly, this is affecting your fourth and eighth house. So this is affecting your metamorphoses, your transformations that you've been going through and your home life, your family life, your foundation, your roots. And this is now bringing blessings to these areas. If you've been going through transformations in those areas, if you've been noticing that you've been wanting to make deeper transformation in yourself, this is a time where you're gonna notice that that transformation is now really beginning to help expand you. It's really helping you become more stable. This is a transit that's helping you become more secure and rooted and finding out where you really want to root yourself, where you really want to create your life and you know, creating more harmonious sort of energy. This is really helping my Leos create that in the mid of November. Then on the 21st, we're going to be having um, Mercury conjunct Venus in Sagittarius, which is in your fifth house. So in the beginning of, or sorry, the middle of the month, we had both of those planets move into the sign of Sagittarius, and now they're gonna be conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius, which is in your fifth house. Now this is really gonna begin enhancing that energy even more that we were having in the middle of the month, that fun, sort of flirtatious, exciting, more passionate energy is going to be even more enhanced as these two planets meet up in the sign of Sagittarius. You you may be noticing that people in your life become a lot more exciting to be around. You may be noticing that you're attracting people into your life, even conversations into your life that are more fun and more exciting, that kind of get you sparked up. This is a time where you're going to be a lot more sparked up in your life. There's gonna be fun sort of things that are bringing out a more passionate energy for you. This could even be a time where you become more creative. You may be noticing a lot of people giving you compliments around this time that are just, you know, complimenting your hair, or complimenting your outfit that day, or just anything, any sort of compliments. This is when you start attracting those things into your life as well. You may also be stepping into a time of your life where you're just wanting to expand the joy that you experience every day, and these two planets meeting up here are really gonna help you do that. Then on the 23rd, we're gonna have a new moon in Sagittarius, so tons of Sagittarius energy, which Leo is really compatible with. Of course, those are both fire signs, so this is a really fiery time 
for Leos, you're going to notice that the month of November just brings out more fire for you, more passion for you. And this new moon is bringing out a new cycle for you, especially in your dating life. This is bringing out a new cycle for you within your creativity. If you have children in your life, this is bringing out a new cycle with them as well. A new cycle of fun, um, romance, bringing out more passion. My Leos, you might be more focused on how can I bring about more romance in my life? How can I romanticize my life more? That's gonna be a big theme in the month of November for my Leos. Then also on the 23rd, on that same day, we also have Jupiter going direct in Pisces. So it was retrograde and now it's finally going back direct again. And it's happening on the same day of that new moon. And this is going to be affecting your eighth house as Jupiter goes direct over here. This is going to be where you're now really starting to move forward and it feels more natural to be this kind of new self that you've been kind of creating. Whenever Jupiter's in the eighth house, we've been going through a metamorphosis and it's kind of helping us expand. It's helping us realize maybe what we need to shift, to shift or change in our life in order to expand more. This can also be a time where my Leos, you've possibly been thinking about investments or shifting your current investments, shifting where you currently put your money and your time. That might be shifting around this time. And with this moving direct, now we're like, ooh, I wanna you know, dive into this. I wanna dive into this new area and expand this because now you're really becoming more sure of yourself in what it is that you want and of the transformations that you've been making. Then on the 30th of the month, we're gonna be having Venus in Sagittarius oppose uh, Mars in Gemini. This is gonna be your fifth and 11th house. So when these two planets are in opposition, it can for one, bring out a lot more passion, a lot more romance. Um, it can bring about more of a creative kind of energy. But on the other hand, it can also bring about more friction depending on how we utilize this transit. So in your fifth and 11th house, this is gonna deal with your fun, your dating life versus maybe your responsibilities or your friends or what they may need from you. So this is your, your, your personal life, versus the life that maybe other people maybe expect for you or want from you or expectations that other people have when it comes to their relationship with you and things like that. So when these two planets are in opposition, we can bring out a lot more passion, a lot more fun, especially if we're considerate of ourselves versus others. We're considerate of what we want versus what is best for the collective or best for the world. When we can kind of think about these two things in harmony and when we can bring about a nice balance between them, this is gonna be a transit that really works for you and brings out more fun and you know more excitement in your life. But if we only verse, if we only, for example, think about ourselves, we only think about, you know, myself, my own personal life versus I'm not going to think about the world or think about others, it could cause some friction in this area and vice versa. So this is a time where it's going to really call you to think about both. Like how can we do things that are really causing goodness for everyone plus myself? You know, we can't put ourselves on the back burner, nor can we forget about you know the rest of the collective so this is going to be a time where you know we can really make this transit work for us if we can find that nice balance and honor ourselves and also honor you know our responsibilities our obligations or the the bigger picture of things this is not just like focusing on the right now and quick pleasures this is also long-term pleasures because the 11th house can also talk about long-term happiness whereas the fifth house can be more short-term happiness so how can we have both of these working together rather than just focusing on our quick short-term happiness, which you have a lot of fifth house energy going on in the month of November. So we might be really focused on like, oh, there's a lot of happiness in the present moment, but we do also need to be conscious and also focus on the long-term happiness of ourselves as well and of others. So that's gonna be something that helps you get more in harmony is when you focus on those aspects uh, during the end of November. This will help you make this transit become really passionate and also really beneficial if you also can bring in more of those long-term goals and things that'll bring you long-term happiness and success as well. Then this transit is going to be a very beautiful one for you. So my Leos, that is what I have for you for the month of November. November. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. I am sending you all of my love. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video.
Bye. Hello, my Virgos, suns, moons, and risings, and welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction for November. So on November 8th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is in your ninth house. So full moons are all about closing old phases. And when it's a lunar eclipse, it actually intensifies all of this. And when it's in the ninth house, this can be where we are being called to take a leap of faith on something. Maybe our beliefs have been in question or the things that we once thought we're starting to question those things. And we're like, you know what? Should I just dive into this? Should I overcome old fears? Should I overcome old boundaries and take a leap of faith on something? And dive into whatever this new sort of maybe idea is or a sort of new chapter. There could be a sort of feeling around this time of like, mm, should I dive into something new? Should I, you know, start to test out kind of new waters and let go of maybe old beliefs or old systems that are no longer working for you anymore? So this is really about stepping outside of your comfort zone, especially since it is in the sign of Taurus. Then on the 15th and the 17th of November, we're going to be having Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is in your fourth house. This can be a time where all of my Virgos are feeling like being a lot more homey around mid-November. You may feel like really just setting your roots down, making a more comfortable home environment. And maybe some of you are also like, I just feel more creative and more inspired at home. So especially since this is in the sign of Sagittarius, you may just feel a lot more like expanding your home life, being a lot more internal and recluse or hermit during this time and making yourself much more comfortable in this area. You may also be focused on how can I expand myself more internally? This is when we're more internal focused rather than external focused. And I think a lot of my Virgos, you're gonna be really working on yourself or other projects or ideas, but from your home with a vision about where it's gonna lead you in the future. A lot of my Virgos, this is time to expand and build your vision, but more from an internal place rather than a fully external place. Then on the 20th of the month, we're gonna be having the Sun trine Jupiter. And this is one of my favorite transits of all time. The Sun is in the sign of Scorpio and Jupiter will be in the sign of Pisces. And even though it is retrograde, it is actually still a very positive um, transit that we're having between the Sun and Jupiter. This is gonna be affecting your third and seventh house. And this trine is bringing blessings to all of the zodiac signs. Anytime that we have Sun trine Jupiter, it is a really positive and expansive time for everyone and it brings blessings to everyone being particularly in your third and seventh house this is going to really bring more of a focus towards the other people in your life your friends your close partnerships and this trine is going to help bring out blessings in these areas you may be talking to people that you're really connecting on a very deep level with you may be realizing who your real friends are and getting even deeper and closer with them during this time this is also a time where we may be expanding more having deeper conversations and feeling like a closer connection to these certain people in our lives. This can also be where we're introduced to maybe new people that are also bringing about a lot of connection for us in this area. Then on the 21st, we're gonna be having Mercury conjunct Venus in the sign of Sagittarius. So earlier in the month, they moved together or sort of on different days, but into the sign of Sagittarius. And now they're actually going to conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius, which is going to be again in your fourth house. And this is going to be where things start even in intensifying more in your home life when it comes to your creativity in your home life when it comes to the time that you're spending with your family this can also create more harmonious relationships in our home life and within our family and i really think my virgos you're rooting yourself to something here you're beginning to really root yourself to something where you can grow and expand more in you might be visualizing what it is that you really want in your future and figuring out how you can create the foundation for that and how you can start growing more into that and expanding into that. So the choices that you're going to be making, the moves that you're going to be making around mid-November are going to really be about how to begin creating those foundations for the new visions that you have for your future. 
Then on the 23rd of the month, we have two important things happening, aspects happening. We have the new moon in Sagittarius, which is opening up a brand new chapter. And again, all of this Sagittarius energy, this is all fourth house energies for my Virgos. This is all about your home life, your foundation, your sense of security, where you're rooting yourself to. Um, and this new moon is opening up a new cycle here. You're going to have a new chapter opening in regards to your home life, in regards to your family life, in regards to your foundation that you're setting for your future. There's a whole new chapter opening. And on the same day, we also have Jupiter going direct in the sign of Pisces. And Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. And so since we have both of these sort of happening on the same day, we have the new moon in Sagittarius and also Jupiter going direct. Both of these energies play off of each other really well. Jupiter is in your seventh house. And since it's now moving direct, you're going to notice that your relationships start moving forward more and start expanding rather than needing a bunch of revisions the revisions have been happening over the past few months and now things are going to begin expanding more in those close partnerships that you have with you now and you're beginning to realize who's really close to you and who you really want to expand with and Jupiter going direct is now going to allow this expansion to begin happening and with that new moon this is really going to be where you're rooting yourself and I also think you're going to be setting new foundations with certain people you're going to be setting new foundations and also connecting deeper to certain people in your life that you're going to have in your life for really a lifetime. These are going to be people that you're going to feel like you can expand with. And that's going to be happening on the 23rd of um, November. Then on the 30th of the month, we're going to be having Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. And this is happening in your fourth and 10th house. Whenever there's an opposition, it can um, create a lot of like passion, a lot of energy, especially between these two planets, but it can also cause some friction depending on how we utilize this energy. Being in your fourth and 10th house, the opposition is going to be between your home, your family life, your new foundation where you're rooting yourself to versus other goals we've created or other obligations that we've created for ourselves and other things that we're striving towards. So the visions that we're striving towards, the um, sort of things that we've committed to before versus maybe where we are right now, maybe in a little bit of a push and pull situation, but as long as we can harmonize both of these and honor both of these, we're going to be able to get through this with a very passionate and positive energy, especially if we can begin marrying these two energies and making them really work together rather than if we only focus on, you know, our current foundation, we forget about our old goals, our responsibilities and things like that, then we're going to notice that there's a little bit of a gap that causes a little bit of a friction. But if we can harmonize both of those, then things are going to work out in your favor a lot. So this can be a time where we bring more energy to both of those areas, the fourth and the 10th house, which is your personal, again, foundation that you're creating your family life and also again your previous commitments and goals and things like that then if we can create that harmony between both of those this is going to be something that brings about more passion and more energy in this area for my virgos so that is what we have for my virgos suns moons and risings for the month of november and be sure to check out your other sun moons and rising signs to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for this next month i'm sending you all of my love and i hope you have a wonderful beautiful and blessed day Bye. Hello, my Libras, and welcome to your part of the Zodiac sign prediction for the month of November. I am super excited to get into it with you. This is for my Libras, suns, moons, and risings. So welcome. On November 8th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is in your eighth house. This is going to be a really kind of interesting time because the full moons are all about closings of old cycles and the lunar eclipses make them even more intense. The eighth house can be of metamorphosis and shared assets and all sorts of transformations and involving other people and things like that as well. So this full moon is closing out old cycles and old chapters. I really think that there's going to be a big metamorphosis when it comes between you and other people. Being in the sign of Taurus though, it's going to bring a sort of awareness to our money and our shared assets. Those that This can bring a highlight towards debts even, money that's owed. When we owe money, this is a full moon lunar eclipse. This is like, okay, maybe I want to focus on paying off certain things so that I feel less stressed out about money. This can also be a time where we're 
we're focused on, okay, what do I want versus what do other people want? And how can I bring that into balance? How can I be more aware of sort of my needs and wants and maybe how they affect other people? This can be about give and take and kind of finding more balance between us and others so that we can come to conclusions that really benefit us and other people as well. Um, so that is this full moon lunar eclipse. It's going to be all about kind of finding more comfort financially and also finding more comfort when it comes to our desires and how we're showing up with other people. There's going to be a big metamorphosis that my Libras go through, which will be a huge improvement for you. That's going to help you transform into who you need to become to begin, um, kind of showing up better and getting better results in your life. Then on the 15th and 17th, so in mid-November, we're going to be having Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is going to be your third house. Both of these moving into Sagittarius opens up a lot more of a fun kind of energy. So mid-November, you may be noticing that there's a lot more of a fun sort of lighthearted sort of flirtatious energy. And since it's going to be in your third house, which is about communication and also sort of other invitations or conversations that we're having. You may be like finding new friendships around this time. You may be just having more fun kind of conversations with people where you're just being more flirtatious, more sort of exciting and also curious because this can be a huge time where we're also learning. You may find a mentor around this time that's teaching you something that you need to know. This could even be a friend that's giving you really good advice, you know, and other people may be coming to you for some advice around this time as well. But since these two planets are in Sagittarius transiting your third, I'm really thinking that this is going to be a time where you are asking people questions that you're curious about, that you want to know. It just seems like you're really open to learning around this time. And again, you may find a mentor or you may even be learning stuff online. This transit can definitely be where we join an online class or we're even getting self-taught in something that we're curious about and want to learn more about. And this is the uh, Venus and Mercury transiting the third in the sign of Sagittarius. It's going to be a lot of time ex of expansion, a lot of time of fun, learning, communication, learning new things from other people and seeking advice or other knowledge and wisdom. There could also be new people that you get introduced to around that time as well. Then on the 20th of the month, we're going to be having the sun trine Jupiter, which is one of my favorite transits of all time. This is such a positive transit and it affects everyone in a very positive way way, all of the zodiac signs. This is where we get blessings. And since the sun is in um, Scorpio and then Jupiter's in the sign of Pisces, this is going to be directly affecting your second and sixth house, which both of these houses deal with sort of work, finances, putting our effort and time into certain things. And so when you're investing your time properly, you're going to be noticing a lot of investments coming back to you, a lot of progress coming back to you around this time. And Jupiter is when it opens up new doors for us, new opportunities for us, especially since it's in the sixth house. This is going to be a time where we really need to revise how we're spending our time what we're spending our time on, what our schedule and routine has been like lately. This can also be a time where we're mo more focused on our health and fitness as well, because Jupiter transit the sixth house can be like, mm, maybe I'm trying to expand myself into newer realms to gain more health back or to gain more vitality. You may be learning about certain things at that time that help you in those areas. And the sun being in the second house, while it's trying Jupiter, is going to be where can I wisely invest my money? Where can I where can I wisely put my money right now? And how can I invest my time and resources to areas that are going to benefit me in the long run? And Jupiter trying the sun in this time is going to bring a lot of blessings and a lot more opportunities around those aspects and areas. Then on the 21st, we're going to be having Mercury conjunct Venus in the sign of Sagittarius, which is happening in your third house. So earlier on in the month, we had both of these planets move into the sign of Sagittarius, and now they're going to be conjunct on the 21st, which is when they meet up together. And it's just going to intensify all of that energy where you are learning new things. You're listening, you're being open, you're communicating and asking questions to learn more and to grow more. You're possibly even picking up a new hobby and studying deeper 
on it, maybe even joining a class or something like that to expand your knowledge or wisdom. And the 21st is just an amplification of all that energy. This can also be where you connect to people that are going to possibly help you grow or possibly have conversations with you that help you expand. This is definitely um, a time where making connections and networking and asking questions is going to benefit you so much. And then on the 23rd, we have two other important transits. We have the new moon in Sagittarius. So all of the Sagittarius energy in the month of November. So it's hugely going to be about Libras and your networking, your communication and having important conversations. That's going to be a major theme in the month of November for you. The new moons are all about new chapters. There's a new chapter opening for my Libras and it's coming through this new expansion, new wisdom that you're getting that's gonna help you expand into newer realms. It's gonna help you really start to move forward and open up a new chapter for yourself. While it's also conjunct, Jupiter going direct. So it's interesting, we have the new moon in Sagittarius and then Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius and with it going direct here in the sign of Pisces, this is going to really help you, especially in your um, kind of new chapter with creating a new routine or new schedule. I really think you're going to be implementing new habits in your life around the 23rd because this new chapter is opening for you. This is going to be a time where you're ready to expand into more. You are ready to add more to your life. You're ready to expand your life and create something more here. Uh, being in your sixth house, this can deal with certain goals that you have around career. It can deal with certain goals that you have around your body, your health and your fitness um, and or of service to other people. This could also be of how we wanna show up um, in the world and what we want our purpose to be as well. Then on the 30th of the month, we're gonna be having Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. When these two planets oppose, it can be a very positive thing or it can also cause friction depending on how we utilize this energy. Being in your third and ninth house, this is gonna be where we have to be open towards learning, listening, being open. This can also be a time where maybe we're having to let go of old philosophies or old values being in the ninth house. So this could be a time where maybe our old kind of ways of being maybe are coming into conflict with also a new direction that's kind of coming up for us. And this is gonna be a time where we have to sort this out. We're needing to take action in the right area. If you're, ta if you're taking action in the old way, based on your old beliefs, your old philosophies, your old self, you're gonna notice that this transit kind of creates some conflict or frustration for you, either internally or externally or mentally. You may be mentally at conflict with yourself if you notice that you're not really showing up for the things that you really do wanna show up for. It may cause some frustrations mentally for you. But if you do show up for those things that you've been really wanting to dive into more, you're gonna notice a lot of benefit and a lot of passion begins to arise around this time. A lot of productivity arrives around this time. This is also a time where we need to be open more to you know, constructive criticism and not take it harshly. If we can take it correctly and we can take constructive criticism, be like, you know what? I'm gonna use this to my benefit, I'm gonna use this to motivate me more, then this is gonna be a great transit for you. This is gonna be something that's gonna offer a lot of growth, it's gonna offer a lot of wisdom, a lot of learning, and it's going to propel you forward more than ever. So that is going to be how you can properly use this transit to get the most out of it so that it can actually work for you and boost you up and create more positivity in your life and more passion. So that is what we have for my Libras for the month of November. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. I'm sending you so much love and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. All right, so my Scorpios, suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction for the month of November. So right on November 8th is when we have our full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. And the full moons are all about closing of old chapters. And when it's a lunar eclipse, it actually intensifies this energy a lot more. Being in the sign of Taurus, this is affecting your seventh house of um, close interpersonal relationships. So close relationships that you have in your life. This is an ending of certain cycles here, ending of certain patterns, closing of old chapters. And with the sign of Taurus, this is asking you, what do you feel comfortable in? Who do you feel comfortable with? 
who do you feel comfortable being? And when we don't feel comfortable, maybe this is something where we need to kind of just like close out those old chapters with people that maybe we don't feel comfortable with closing out old chapters, kind of doing things that maybe we don't feel comfortable doing. So when it comes to saying yes to certain things with our close interpersonal relationships, when we don't actually mean to say yes, when we don't actually want to say yes, this is going to be a time where that's highlighted and we're like, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to say yes only to the things that feel like a full yes to me. So this is going to be a time where you're really starting to honor more about your values in your relationships. This is gonna be a time where all of my Scorpios, you're really starting to highlight what is it that I value and who really honors those values with me and how can I set up those proper boundaries and close old habits that maybe weren't really honoring my comforts and things like that. So this is gonna be a time where my Scorpios, that is going to be a main theme in the beginning of November. Then on the 15th and 17th, we're gonna be having Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is going to be in your second house. This can be where we're starting to take things a lot slower and we're making more serious decisions. We're taking our decisions more seriously, especially when it comes to financial decisions or material decisions, um, conversations that we have with other people in our life and other relationships. Now we're starting to really think about things a lot deeper. And I think you're starting to expand your mind a lot more rather than rushing into certain decisions or feeling pressured to make a decision. I feel like my Scorpios, you're like, I'm gonna start taking my time. I'm gonna start honoring what feels comfortable to me rather than rushing on anything or rather than feeling a pressure to do something or act on something. This is a time where you're really starting to take your time a lot more seriously. You're also starting to take your money a lot more seriously and you're like, do I really wanna spend my money on things that aren't really maybe a necessity? And this is a time where, again, all of those energies are gonna be highlighted and we're beginning to reflect a lot more on that kind of stuff. Venus and Mercury in the sign of Sagittarius in general can be where we're starting to get a lot more sort of fun and flirtatious, but since it's in your second house, you're really starting to kind of be a lot more aware and more cautious and more in alignment and in tune with your values, which makes you make decisions kind of a little bit slower um, at this time, but that's gonna be for your benefit hugely. Then on the 20th of the month, we're gonna have one of my favorite transits of all time, which is the Sun Trine Jupiter. This is one of the greatest transits and it offers blessings and miracles to all of the zodiac signs. For you in particular, since the Sun is in Scorpio and Jupiter is in Pisces, this is gonna be affecting your first and fifth house. So this is going to bring a lot of blessings to my Scorpio since the sun is literally in the sign of Scorpio trying Jupiter in Pisces. This is going to bring out a lot of creativity for my Scorpios, a lot more of an energy where you're starting to feel yourself a lot, and you're going to notice a lot of blessings in your life as you kind of make these certain changes that you've been sort of realizing lately. You're also starting to realize what is really enjoyable for you, especially with Jupiter being in the fifth house. You've been making a lot of revisions on that and sort of starting to pull yourself back from old things that used to maybe excite you but don't anymore, things that you've outgrown. With Jupiter going retrograde in your fifth house, it's been really causing you and calling you to pull your energy back and to call your power back and to start saying no to the things that maybe just don't feel right for you anymore and to start ending old um, patterns and habits in that area. And when it's trying the sun, ooh, you are starting to really feel yourself. You're really starting to realize yourself and honor what it is that you enjoy. And this is gonna be such a great transit as long as you really start to dive into doing those things. Oh my goodness, is Jupiter trying the sun ever gonna bring you blessings in these areas of realizing what it is that makes you really excited and happy? You're gonna notice that intensifies around this time, that you get more reward for doing you and being you. You're gonna get more reward for that um, during mid-November when the sun trines Jupiter. Then on the 21st, we're going to be having Mercury conjunct Venus. So earlier in the month, we had both of these planets moving into the sign of Sagittarius. Now they're gonna be conjuncting where, it, where they meet up in the sign of Sagittarius, and that's gonna be in your second house, which is basically going to be a moment where it intensifies all of the other mid-November things that were going on. This is a time where now you're gonna notice a lot of reward for setting certain boundaries. You're gonna notice a lot more reward and things begin moving forward 
as you were kind of slow and you took your time on certain things that you just felt the need to take your time on, you're gonna notice that that's actually becoming a huge benefit to you and I think that's gonna be something that is a really positive impact in your life. Then on the 23rd, we're gonna have two other important transits. We're gonna be having our new moon in Sagittarius, which is in your second house, while Jupiter also goes direct in the sign of Pisces. And Jupiter and Sagittarius are very connected, as you guys might know. So um, basically, our new moon in Sagittarius being in your second house, this is opening up a new chapter for you financially. This is opening up a new chapter for you when it comes to your values. And you're really beginning to expand yourself in there. You're calling your energy back from things that didn't really Really resonate with you anymore and you're now starting to really push forward and open up a whole new chapter and book on things that do really feel like they're in alignment with you so it's literally like you're siphoning and transferring energy which is very Scorpio of you by the way because Scorpio is all about those metamorphoses and you're now you know taking what no longer serves you and now you're just putting it into and investing it into new areas which is all of that second house energy so since we have so much Sagittarius energy during the month of November this is affecting you in all of these ways and all this second house kind of energy where it comes to your material world your finances your time and um, your values and your investments so you're investing your energy and your resources to other areas that you actually desire fully to invest in. With Jupiter also going direct in your fifth house, this is gonna be a really positive time for you as well because now you're beginning to really start to realize and push that energy in a new direction. The fifth house is where we spend our time and um, fun and our passion and our dating life. That's where we spend you know, that kind of energy or where that energy is created. So what is fun to you? What ignites your passions? When Jupiter was retrograde, it was helping you revise what your passions were. And now we're able to redirect it since Jupiter is now going direct. We're now able to expand more on the things that do really serve us, especially when it comes to our passions, our dating life, our romance, um, and you know, all of our personal kind of life. Then on the 30th, we have Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. So this opposition can actually be very positive, but it can also bring out friction depending on how we utilize this energy of this time. Since it's affecting your second and eighth house, this is going to be where you are desiring to honor your new values, but it may be affecting other people in a certain way as well. And so depending on how we go about this, it'll either be something that's very positive and very encouraging, or it may also cause a little bit of friction in these areas, especially if we still have a lot of ties to other people. So at this time, just because we're going through a transformation, it doesn't necessarily mean that other people are feeling the same way. And so if we focus more on ourselves and we're focused more on, you know, honoring other people through the process of us going through our shifts, if we honor ourselves and others through that, it's going to really be a beneficial time where you're going to notice you get a lot of support, a lot of encouragement, and you feel very positive doing so. But if we're going through this transit and maybe, you know, we are getting angry at other people or trying to pull them into our new direction as well, if they don't want to, it may cause some friction between you and those kind of people. Um, in your life. So at this time, what's going to be the most beneficial is to really begin to honor yourself fully as well as honor others. And this is going to be something that ends up being a lot more positive for you. And it helps this transit become more passionate and more encouraging and more full of life rather than something that causes some friction. But either way, even if friction does occur, it's not bad. It's part of this transit to help sort of, you know, help this transition of energies for you during the month of November. So that is basically what we have for my Scorpios, suns, moons, and risings for the month of November. I hope you enjoyed this horoscope and this reading. Again, that was for my suns, moons, and risings of Scorpios. Be sure to check out your other suns, moons, and risings to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. I am sending you so much love, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, so my Sagittarius's suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your November horoscope. I am excited to get into it with you. So on the 8th of November, we have a pretty intense um, aspect happening. We have the full moon lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Taurus, which is affecting your sixth house. So full moons are 
endings of old cycles or chapters and things like that. When it's a lunar eclipse though, it intensifies this a lot and being in your sixth house this is going to bring up certain things around our work life or our health that need to be addressed if we've neglected anything or if we've put stuff off um, that have been sort of harder things to face around our health or our work this is going to be something that comes up around this time because it's like the full moon it's like let's wrap up loose ends if we've been putting anything off if we've been you know not doing some of our responsibilities that is going to come up around this time for us to actually complete them um, because that's what the full moon is all about the full moon is like no we need to close these chapters because it's time for a new cycle so if we've been putting stuff off it is now time to face it accept it and complete it and actually address those things so that we can kind of finish those um, aspects so we could move on to a new chapter. Otherwise we get held back, right? So the full moons are for helping us kind of close out those things and sort of address those things that maybe we've been putting off or neglecting. So it's gonna help you move forward a lot once those things are sort of faced. It's gonna help you open up a new chapter um, afterwards then on the 15th and the 17th we're going to be having venus and mercury moving into the sign of sagittarius and this is going to be of course when it moves into your first house because you my sagittarius that's the sagittarius energy so having venus and mercury move here is actually going to be very positive and we have a lot of sagittarius energy happening through the month of november so Sagittarius, this is going to be a very highlighted month of the year for you. Um, and of course, around this time, as we approach Sagittarius's birthdays, this is a time where, you know, there's a lot going on for my Sages. But with Venus and Mercury moving here into your first house, you're going to notice that you feel more alive. You're more full of energy. So mid-November, there's a lot more energy happening for Sagittarius. You're going to feel more motivated. You're going to feel more passionate, more talky, more flirty, more alive and it's just a great sort of energy in general when these two planets are in Sagittarius they do kind of open up our ability to communicate our excitement and curiosity for learning and also a more fun flirtatious kind of energy you might notice that you just feel more passionate around this time as these two planets move and transit your sign then on the 20th of the month, we're going to be having one of my favorite transits of all time, and it's going to be affecting every single zodiac sign in a very positive way, which is Sun, Trine, Jupiter. This is a beautiful time, and even though Jupiter is retrograde, this um, aspect is still beautiful. It is still amazing. It offers miracles and blessings. The Sun is in Scorpio, and Jupiter's in Pisces, so this is affecting your 12th and 4th house. This is a time where you're going to have a lot of blessings, especially with your mentality, your mental state with the 12th house. So when it comes to your subconscious old patterns and beliefs, you're going to notice that things start happening that are very positive, that make you realize that old limitations that you've had maybe aren't necessarily real. You may have things happen to you around this time where things that you didn't think were possible, things that you maybe didn't even think you were capable of are all of a sudden now appearing. Ways for things to happen that you didn't think could happen are now going to begin opening up for you. Doors that you didn't even see before are gonna begin opening up for you. That is what this 12th house energy is as it trines Jupiter. It is opening up new doors and helping us expand beyond what we previously thought we could. So all those old blocks limitations, limiting beliefs that you've had, those are getting proved wrong in a very beautiful way um, during mid-October around the 20th. Then it's also affecting your fourth house as well. Since it's affecting the fourth and twelfth house with this Sun and Jupiter trine, this is also going to be about where you root yourself, your home life, your family life, and you may notice blessings happening around this area too. So when it comes to your foundation, when it comes to even your savings account or the foundation and security that you have moving forward, the foundation that you want to create for your future, this is going to be where blessings happen in this area as well. We may be noticing new opportunities coming out or just things happening that we're like, oh, I didn't even think that that could happen before, but this is really exciting and really nice. So that is going to be this Sun trine Jupiter transit. And then on the, 20, uh, the 21st, we're going to be having Mercury 
uh, conjunct Venus in the sign of Sagittarius. So beforehand, earlier in the month, both of these planets moved into Sagittarius. Now they're going to be conjunct and meeting up on the 21st, which is of course, again, in your zodiac sign. And this is just going to be a time where it even intensifies the earlier energy where you're going to be really starting to feel yourself, maybe even reinvent yourself. Um, and start to see more positivity within yourself. There's gonna be a lot more self-love at this time and you're gonna feel a lot more in alignment. Your focus is gonna be a lot more in alignment. Your feelings and your emotions are gonna be a lot more in alignment. The conversations that you have with other people are gonna be a lot more in alignment. It's gonna feel great and you may even be meeting people that you really relate to around this time as well. Then on the 23rd, we're going to have two other major transits happening. We're going to have our new moon in Sagittarius, which is in your sign. So what did I tell you in the beginning? There's a lot of Sagittarius energy happening during the month of November. So this new moon in Sag is going to be a beautiful time of opening up a new chapter for you. So the 23rd is a big time. This new moon is literally the opening of a brand new book for you. And at that same time, time on that same day, we're also going to be having Jupiter going direct, which is your ruling planet as a Sagittarius. So that's happening in your fourth house. Both of these happening, these are both very connected and they're happening on the same day. So this is going to be a really significant time for my Sagittarius is where you're opening up a new chapter and you're possibly even laying out a new sort of foundation or a new plan for your future. And you might even be rooting yourself to a new idea, rooting yourself to a new self, to a new vision and to a new goal or place that you feel more secure and that you're really excited to build upon, really excited to grow into. So that's happening on the 23rd. And then on the 30th, we're going to be having Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. And this can be a very positive transit, but it can also cause a little bit of friction depending on how we utilize this energy. So I'm going to be telling you about this energy so that you can utilize it to the best of your ability. These two planets are going to be affecting and opposing each other in your first and seventh house. So this deals with the self versus others. So how can we bring more balance between ourself and what we desire versus maybe what other people desire and honoring our partnerships as well, honoring the people that we are surrounded by? How can we create positive collaborations in this area? Since Venus is going to be in your first house, you're going to be having a lot of ideas and a lot of expansion within yourself. There's going to be a lot of expansion. And then Mars, which is the area and the planet of which we take action on, is going to be transiting your seventh house. You may be wanting to take action a lot in your relationships, but it's about focusing on, you know, not only doing and taking action upon what we want, but also being considerate for other people, you know, focusing on how can we create more balance and harmony between what we want and the direction we're going in versus other people. Of course, we can't just be people pleasers, but nor can we just be like focused solely on ourselves and become selfish either. When we could create the, a more balanced environment here, this is going to be a transit that really amplifies both of these areas. You can use this transit to amplify your relationships and amplify yourself in a more passionate, exciting way. Or if we're, you know, imbalance in this area or we lose focus in both of these aspects, it can cause a bit of friction. But even if this is caused, it's caused in order to create more balance. So either way, no matter how you play out this transit, it's going to bring about more balance and harmony in your life either way. But with the awareness, we can bring out more of the passion and less of the friction of this transit. And it's going to be great regardless either way. So that is what we have for my Sagittarius' suns, moons, and risings. I hope you enjoyed this November horoscope. I am sending you so much love. Be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Hello, my beautiful Capricorns, suns, moons, and risings, and welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction. So on the 8th of November, we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is in your fifth house. This is a very intense time because a full moon is about ending old chapters and things like that. And then when it's a lunar eclipse, it intensifies this energy and amplifies it even more. Being in your fifth house, this can be a time where we're wrapping up an old creative projects. This can also be a time where we're feeling a lot of emotion that we're wanting to express. So there could be a lot on your mind, a lot that you feel a push or a pull to sort of express 
or to get out or to finally complete so that you can you know end this old cycle and kind of open up a new chapter for yourself so this is going to be a really intense time of feeling a lot of things you might feel a lot of passion around this time that you feel like expressing or telling to somebody or you may even feel like again finishing kind of old creative things and we're ready to sort of just yeah be done with those so that we can move to something new and we can begin focusing our energy towards you know a new cycle or a new stage this is really like you're getting ready to open up a new stage for yourself then on the 15th and the 17th of the month we're going to be having venus and mercury both moving into the sign of a Sagittarius, and this is gonna be in your 12th house. A lot of my Capricorns, this is gonna be a time where you're wanting to go more internal, be a little bit more recluse. Um, and even though Venus and uh, Mercury are moving into Sagittarius, which is a really fun, sort of exciting, flirtatious sort of energy, being in your 12th house, this is gonna be where you start to get a lot more mentally creative. And you may also desire to be a bit more of a homebody around this time, and you may be noticing that you're more creative and you're having a lot more fun when you are spending time with yourself, when you're kind of more alone and focusing on the things that you desire to focus on. There could be a lot of creativity around this time and you might be like, you know what, let's be indoors and let's focus on creating like more fun and more excitement from within. You're focused on your internal happiness around this time, not necessarily external happiness. You're focused more on that internal sort of creative energy and bringing out more fun that way. So that's gonna be happening during mid-November. Then on the 20th, we're gonna be having one of my favorite aspects and transits of all time, which is Sun Trine Jupiter. This brings out blessings to all of the zodiac signs. It brings about miracles, blessings, great energy. And even though Jupiter is retrograde, this transit is still amazing. And it is particularly affecting your 11th and third house. So for you, my Capricorns, this is gonna be affecting your interpersonal relationships and bringing, up, uh, bringing about a lot of blessings when it comes to communication, when it comes to new opportunities opening up. You may even be having people inviting you to certain things that opens up new opportunities for you. This could be expansion in your learning that's gonna open up a new blessing or door for you in some way. There could be something that you're studying or really curious about that you get to dive into even more where Jupiter kind of opens up a brand new door this area for you and you get to dive in further um, this could be where you're meeting and networking with people that are going to benefit you a lot down the line or in the future so you may be getting closer to certain people or meeting important people that are going to offer and bring you more blessings um, later on in your life then on the 21st we're going to be having mercury conjunct uh, venus which is in Sagittarius. So beforehand, earlier on in the month, we had both of these planets moving into Sagittarius. And then on the 21st, they're gonna be conjuncting, which is basically gonna be when we're intensifying that other energy from earlier on in the month. So now, you're gonna be noticing that you are even more inspired or more sort of motivated when it comes to your creativity, when it comes to what you are thinking about or even imagining. Capricorns, your imagination, I think, is going to be off the charts during the month of November. I think you're going to get a lot more creative, but this can also be a time where we're starting to see our old mentalities and our old sort of limitations, our old subconscious programs, and we're starting to be like, you know what, maybe I want to expand a little bit more internally and maybe I want to expand my tastes a bit more maybe I want to expand my old limitations a bit more so that I can you know start to welcome in new energies but at the same time there's sort of this energy of going a lot within during the month of November I feel like there's going to be a lot of exploration within you uh, during this month since we have so much Sagittarius energy then on the 23rd we're going to be having the new moon also in Sagittarius so even more Sag energy which is of course in your 12th house the new moon here is opening up a new cycle for you mentally creatively and with your imagination this is opening up a brand new chapter in this area for you so I really think for my Capricorns you're really realizing who you are and what you enjoy doing and you're realizing new ways of expressing your creativity and new sort of ideas or imaginative things can come through at this time. Then also on that same day, we have Jupiter going direct in the sign of Pisces, which is in your third house. So it's crazy that both of these sort of aspects are happening at the same time. Um, 
um, especially since Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. So Jupiter now going direct as well with this Sagittarius new moon is going to cause like a whole new door kind of opening around this time. And since this is in your third house, you may be learning something new that really opens up this new chapter for you. You may be sort of planning for something or maybe you get invited to something or maybe you have a certain conversation with somebody that really enhances this new sort of chapter for you and really sort of um, provides more support or more direction in this new chapter. It's really like there's a lot of good blessings when it comes to your creativity. And this new energy is also gonna really help you plan for something new. This new chapter, this is also planning and getting more detail oriented and learning new things about it so that you can really start to perfect this new chapter. Then on the 30th of the month, we're gonna be having Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. This is gonna be in your 12th and 6th house. So Venus oppose Mars can be something that either ends up being very passionate and very amplified and action oriented, or it can also be a transit that causes some friction depending on how we utilize it. So being in your 12th and 6th house, there may be some conflicts with your new ideas or with what you currently believe your current limitations on yourself versus what you actually want to do. You may feel like, oh, am I physically capable of that? Like, am I capable of creating this new idea? I don't think I can do that. So it could cause some conflict or friction when we are, um, sort of noticing how our creativity is maybe sort of being opposed by what we believe that we're capable of or our current schedules and routines and what it allows for us. So this opposition is bringing about this energy, but we can also utilize this to our advantage. And depending on how we go about this energy, we can actually amplify it in a very good way to where it's no longer in opposition. It's no longer conflicting with us. We can use that creative energy to also realize that you're much cap much more capable than you realize. You're so much more capable than you realize. And if you can think about something, it has been done before, you know, by other people in some way, shape or form, which shows that we're also capable of doing that. We're no different. We have capabilities and there's crazy miracles that happen all the time. So this is also kind of an energy that's asking you to believe in something bigger, believe in something greater, and know that you're more capable than you realize. So this transit's really calling you to realize that you are actually more capable and more magical than you may think. And you're more capable of so much more and this will help you sort of move into this energy a lot better and if you can also heal old limitations old you know conflicting thoughts with yourself with this sixth and twelfth house you can use the sixth house to heal old limiting beliefs that maybe kept you once restricted and realize that those are just limiting beliefs they're not factual reality some of our limiting beliefs they can really feel like they're very real to us for example limiting belief that money is really hard to attain. That is a limiting belief because it doesn't necessarily have to be hard to attain, right? So this can be something that either will cause a lot of conflict within you or we can heal that and realize, oh, it doesn't have to be hard to attain. Maybe I just need to change my way of going about it. Maybe I just need to change my idea of it and that's gonna help my mind expand into thinking about ways where it can, where it can be easy. So that's an interesting sort of psychological thing that you may be sort of realizing and going through near the end of November and breaking down old belief systems so that you can get the most out of your dreams and desires and that you can create the most out of your life. So that's what that transit is going to be bringing about in November. So this is going to be really helping you expand into more my Capricorn. So that is what we have for my Capricorn suns, moons, and risings. Be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you. For the month of November, I am sending you so much love and hopefully I see you in my next video. Bye. Hello, my beautiful Aquariuses, and welcome to your part of the Zodiac sign prediction for the month of November. This is for my Aquariuses, suns, moons, and risings. So welcome. On November 8th, we begin the month strong with a really big energy with the full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is affecting your fourth house. So the full moon is when there's a lot of accumulation of energy and it's the closing out of an old chapter. And when it's a lunar eclipse, it intensifies this energy a lot. 
being in your fourth house, there may be a lot of your attention being pulled towards your home life or your family life or your assets in some kind of way, shape or form around the 8th of November, because this is a huge accumulation of energy in this area. And it's asking you to also close out an old cycle. So you may be kind of wrapping up loose ends around your home life. There may be certain things with your home life or your assets or your family that you're now sort of wrapping up in order to begin a new chapter. Things have come full circle here and there's a brand new chapter opening in this area for you. And there may be something again happening around this time that pulls your attention and focus towards maybe property that you own, your home life, your family, and things like that. So that is what is happening around the 8th of November. Then on the 15th and 17th, we have Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, and this is going to be in your 11th house. Venus moving over here into your <clears throat> 11th house. Sorry, my throat's getting all crazy. I've been talking for a long time, but Venus moving into your 11th house in Sagittarius. This can be where things are kind of popping off for you. You may notice that you're getting more attention from family or friends. This can also be where business starts doing really well or conversations do really well. Your love life is going really well. There's expansive conversations happening all around you, expansive conversations in your love life, your career life with the people that are around you. And it's just a very good energy in general. Venus in Sagittarius is a more fun, flirtatious, expansive energy where we're really open to learning more and we're also really open to sharing information and all of that. And Mercury being here as well, Mercury is the planet of communication. So since it's also transiting this area on the 17th, this is also gonna bring about more communication and more interesting topics being discussed around this time. You may also be really inclined to share knowledge that you've been learning. You may also be really inclined to have deeper, more expansive out there kind of conversations with the people that are in your life. It's just a really good time for communication in general. And I feel like it's going to be a really fun time for my Aquariuses to begin expanding even more and possibly even meeting new people as well. Because Mercury in the 11th house can also indicate where we meet new people. And these are people that we're really getting along with and people that we're feeling really excited to talk to. So that's happening in mid November. Then on the 20th, we have one of my favorite transits of all time, which is Sun trying Jupiter. This brings about blessings and miracles to all of the zodiac signs. This is such a positive transit, and this is affecting your 10th and second house. This can be where your money increases. This can be where you get a lot of blessings financially. You get a lot of blessings in your security. You get a lot of blessings when it comes to your bigger goals and your career and your dreams and your commitments. These are all gaining new heights. You are possibly even opening up new doors in your career around this time. And you might be meeting the right people or making the right connections or just getting new opportunities because again, Sun trying Jupiter is all about those blessings. The second house is all about your money, your finances, and your assets. And the 10th house is your goals and your career. So this is a really great time where you're gonna notice a lot of expansion in these areas and other things that used to feel challenging to you are gonna feel a lot less challenging around this time. And then on the 21st, we're gonna be having uh, Mercury conjunct Venus in the sign of Sagittarius, which is again in your 11th house. Both of these moved into the sign of Sagittarius earlier on into the month, and now they're gonna be meeting up together, which basically just amplifies the energy that was happening earlier on, and it just makes it even more intensified. So there's gonna be even more fun conversations. You're gonna be learning even more. Your sense of curiosity is off the charts. You're gonna be um, meeting people that are, again, very fun to talk to, and this can be a time where you're really making those closer connections and possibly even meeting up with those new people that you met up with or met earlier on in the month. Maybe you're going to have another meeting with them or another conversation with them, or this could even be something that you learned and you were curious about earlier on in the month that you're expanding on even more at this time. Then on the 23rd, we're going to have two really important transits happening on the same day. We're going to be having our new moon in Sagittarius, which is of course in your 11th house. And at the same time, we're going to be having Jupiter direct in your second. This can be where you're really starting to open up a new cycle for yourself financially or within your career. Um, this can also be where you're opening up a new chapter with new people in your life, new friendships, and kind of seeing who you really vibe with and get along with. 
and this Jupiter direct, you're now expanding a lot more in your career. You're expanding a lot more in your finances. Somehow there's opportunities coming up that are going to create more abundance for you down the road with Jupiter now going direct in this area for you. As it was going um, retrograde, it was where we were revising a lot of our finances. It's maybe where we were replanning things and making sure that we had all of our eggs in the right place. And now it's moving forward in this area. So all those revisions that we made previously over the last like six months are now going to be moving forward and you're going to reap the rewards of those revisions that were made in the past um, few months there. Then on the 30th of the month, we're going to be having Venus oppose Mars. Venus in Sagittarius oppose Mars in Gemini. This transit can be something where it either brings us a lot of passion, a lot of great motivational energy, or it can be something that causes a lot of friction depending on how we utilize the energy of this time. Since this is happening in your 11th and 5th house, this can actually enhance your uh, the people that are in your life, the conversations that you're having, and as well your dating life and your passionate life and your personal life. It can enhance all of those areas as long as we're working with them together and in harmony. Although this is a uh, transit that can also cause a little bit of friction if we don't utilize this energy properly because it can also cause friction between your personal life and your life with um you know your the, the other people that in your life the more casual friendships so our more casual friendships versus our you know personal life and our dating life they could come at conflict if we're not finding balance between them and we're not really finding ways to connect them and feel like we are honoring both sides. If we're not honoring our personal, more intimate life properly, then we're gonna have that imbalance when it comes to the other kind of relationships or our bigger purpose, because the 11th house is also our bigger purpose. So this is about not putting too many eggs in one basket, not spending way too much time in our personal life that we're ignoring our bigger purpose, because then, then we're gonna feel an internal conflict there, we're gonna feel some internal pressure, or, you know, versus if we're spending way too much time on our purpose and not focusing on our personal life, that might cause some friction in our personal life and we might be feeling some conflict in there. But if we can find balance in these areas, we're gonna notice that these two things actually amplify each other and become even more passionate and motivational. So as long as you can marry them and kind of find that um, balance here, you're going to notice that this area becomes a lot more passionate and you're going to feel a lot better in this, this sort of uh, area of your life. Although, even if you do get some of that conflict, it's actually for your benefit. If you do feel some of that friction around that end of November kind of time frame, this is actually for your benefit because it's helping you balance out those areas. So it's positive either way, no matter how you go about it. But with the awareness, we can bring about more of that balance prior and experience less of the friction during that time. So that is what I have for my Aquariuses, suns, moons, and risings for the month of November. I hope you enjoyed this video and this horoscope. Be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most all-encompassing and accurate horoscope for you for the month of November. I'm sending you all my love and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, so my Pisces, suns, moons, and risings, welcome to your part of the zodiac sign prediction. This is for uh, the month of November. So on the 8th of November, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which is affecting your third house. Um, the lunar eclipses intensify the full moons a lot. And so around this time, there could be some important stuff that comes up around the 8th of November where maybe we have to take like a sudden trip because the third house can be like quick, short trips. Um, it can also indicate that maybe something will come up around this time where we need to complete something important. There could be other stuff like just menial tasks that come up that's like, oh, that's really important. I need to get that done. I need to complete that. And this full moon is bringing about that energy that's going to help us complete those things. There also could be some important conversations or important things that we need to wrap up um, around this time. Some important emails that need to be done, some important other communications with friends or business partners or other things like that that need to be completed. And the full moon is helping us um, bring up those energies so that we can actually get those done and so we can move on to other things. This is stuff that kind of like needs to get wrapped up and I know it's kind of more boring, mundane kind of stuff in the beginning, but it's an intensified energy so that we can move forward and close that out and open up a new cycle. Then 
on the 15th and 17th of the month, we're going to be having Venus and Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius. And this is going to be when they move into your 10th house. The 10th house is the area of career, goals, commitments, responsibilities. With Venus moving over here, this is going to really help you sort of see your responsibilities and certain other commitments that you've committed to and other goals as a good thing. So other goals that you've made for yourself that you've been really wanting to reach to, those new heights that you've been wanting to attain and get to, you're going to find ways of making those more interesting and more fun. And there's going to be more motivation around this time and a more caring, sort of comfortable energy when it comes to those goals that you're wanting to reach. You may even have somebody in your life that's really encouraging with these goals as well. You may find a lot of encouraging and supportive energy when it comes to those goals that you've created in your life. This can also be a time where you're really starting to glow up as well because Venus transit the 10th can also be when we're starting to improve ourselves a lot or maybe improving our physicality or maybe improving our view of ourselves, our self-love, our self-image and things like that. And being in the sign of Sagittarius, it, of Sagittarius, this is when we're really starting to point our bow and arrow at new targets and new heights that we are ready to get to. And we're feeling a lot more, again, encouragement and a lot more motivation in that area. Then on the 17th, we also have Mercury moving into the sign of Sagittarius, which is also your 10th house. And this moving over here, you may find yourself more focused on things that need to get done. You may find yourself more focused on planning and making sure that things are in order because you feel like you just don't want the stress of having things get chaotic. So this is going to be a time where you're feeling more organized. You're feeling like things are really moving forward. Um, this could be a time where you are getting communication about certain things that are helping you push more forward on your career. There's a lot more thought or a lot more focus on your goals or your career or your responsibilities and you're really helping push that energy forward and get those things done with this mercury transit then on the 20th we have one of my favorite transits of all time which is the sun trine jupiter this is happening in your ninth and first house and even though jupiter is retrograde um, and it is retrograde in your sign of pisces this is still a very positive transit. It, it brings blessings and miracles to all the zodiac signs, whether it's retrograde or not, but this transit is so positive and it's gonna bring miracles in your life, particularly to your ninth and first house. So this is gonna be a time where you're really beginning to expand yourself a lot. This is gonna bring a lot of miracles to you personally, a lot of miracles to you physically, and a lot of miracles to you um, in regards to who you are and what you want and who you want to become. There's going to be a lot of blessings and a lot of doors opening in this area. With the ninth house as well, this is also going to be where you get blessings with new information, new ideas, new philosophies, new opportunities that can help you expand and grow even more because the ninth house is all about that expansion and growth. This can also be a time where you're maybe even planning a trip or there could be like, um, you may be thinking about traveling or making plans for that in your future with this ninth and first house. This can also be about how you're expanding yourself in general. And there could again be lots of blessings and miracles happening around those areas of your life that are going to have a very positive impact on you. So that's going to be great. And again, whenever Jupiter is also in your sign, it offers so many blessings in general, even when it's not in trine with the sun, it's just such a great um, thing to have Jupiter transit your sign. So this is going to be beautiful now that it's going direct in your sign again, just for the last little bit. And it's also going to be trying the sun at this time, which is offering even extra blessings to my Pisces during the month of November. Then on the 21st, we're going to be having Mercury conjunct Venus in Sagittarius. Both of those planets moved into Sagittarius earlier on in the month, and now they're going to be conjunct in your 10th house. So this is just amplifying that energy that we had earlier on. Now you're going to be noticing that things are just really starting to work out. You're creating a really solid plan for yourself in regards to your goals and how to overcome certain challenges, how to create more commitment and how to feel good about your commitments that you're making how to feel more encouraged in these new directions and how to like create more positive responsibility in your life, but positive. The key word is positive responsibility. <laughs> okay. And then on the 23rd, we're going to have the new moon in Sagittarius. So there's tons of Sagittarius energy happening in this month for you, which is all affecting your 10th house. So this is really affecting how can we reach 
those higher heights? How can we reach those higher goals that we have for ourselves? How can we enhance our career? How can we really, um, yeah, like glow up and reach those bigger places, right? Especially with that Sagittarius energy that's here. So the new moon in this area is opening up a new chapter for your goals. You may be creating new goals around this time. You may be creating a new regime that you wanna follow around this time. You may also be creating new um, desires at this time that you're like, yeah, I wanna reach that. Yes, I wanna do that. And it's a lot more positive energy for my Pisces. On that same day, we also have Jupiter going direct, which Jupiter is one of your ruling planets. And so that one also going direct. And again, it's also connected to Sagittarius as well. And the fact that it's happening on the same day as the Sagittarius new moon is very significant. And since Jupiter is um, one of your traditional rulers, this going direct, which is of course in your first house, is gonna be very positive. Now things that we've been revising for the past six months, things that we've been like constantly at conflict in with ourselves, things that have needed revision, especially on a personal level, things that you've been revising on a personal level, all those revisions that you've had to make and learn over the past six months while Jupiter's been retrograde are now gonna help you begin moving forward right? Because the retrogrades are when we revise. And since it's been retrograde and went back into the sign of Pisces, this is when Jupiter has been really asking all my Pisces to do some, a lot of, a lot of like personal revisions, revisions on a personal level. And since we've made and learned all of those things over the past six months while Jupiter went retrograde here, especially over the past like month or so as Jupiter went retrograde back into your sign because it was retrograde in Aries, but then it went back into Pisces. So especially over the past month or two months for my Pisces, there's been a lot of personal revisions that you've been making. And now that Jupiter's direct, you're gonna notice the payoff of those revisions. You're gonna notice the payoff of all of that learning that you've been doing, and it's now gonna offer more expansion for you. Then on the 30th of the month, we're gonna have Venus oppose Mars. Venus is in Sagittarius, Mars is in uh, Gemini, and these both are gonna oppose each other in your 10th and 4th house. This opposition can be very positive, but it can also cause friction depending on how we utilize this energy. So, since it's in the 10th and 4th house, there are certain goals that you have with yourself, but then certain other things when it comes to your foundation and your personal life and your family life that may be in opposition with your, your goals that you're trying to attain or your work goals or other sort of responsibilities that you have. You may have certain responsibilities on your plate that may kind of take away from um, maybe your family life or what your family wants or needs or your other personal life goals and things like that. So your personal and family life may come at conflict with your responsibilities and other work things. But if we can figure out a way to actually balance this in a fair way, you're gonna notice that this transit actually really benefits both of these areas and brings in more passion, more fun, more action into both of these areas of your life. But if we don't have them in balance, we may find a little bit of conflict from either end of those um, aspects. So we could find the conflict with our family or we could find the conflict with those responsibilities that need our attention. But when we can find the nice balance, and balance can be a bit of a fine line, but as we can find that balance, we're going to notice that this transit is really positive and it's going to be positive either way so even if you do experience some of that friction it's happening so that you can create more balance in these areas and then it will end up being very positive regardless either way whichever ends up happening but if we have our awareness through this we can create a lot less of that friction and move quicker into the balance with the awareness of this transit so that is what we have for my Pisces for the month of November. I am sending you so much love and I hope you enjoyed this horoscope. Be sure to check out your other sun, moon, and rising sign to get the most accurate and all-encompassing horoscope for you. For the month of November, I'm sending you so much love and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!